The National Park Service has a draft general management plan, which includes a wilderness study and environmental impact statement for Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And it's taken five plus years to complete. We recently spoke to officials about the 548 page document that will help guide the management philosophy and act as a framework for decision making at the park. Yeah, the Park Service tries to do them every 20 years. Um, our last one, however, was from 1975, so it's very outdated. We've had a lot of things change in the park, and we've had a big new addition to the park, the Kahuku unit in 2003. So this plan will really help guide the management of Kahuku because right now we don't have any management plan covering Kahuku. With the acquisition of the Kahuku unit, the Park Service is required to analyze those lands and determine if any of them are eligible for wilderness designation or should be recommended for wilderness designation. So the park went through a wilderness eligibility assessment um, back in 2010 and determined that 121,000 acres of Kahuku was eligible for wilderness designation based on the characters of wilderness. It has solitude, it's untrammeled, it's um, natural features remain. So based on that eligibility then as part of the general management plan, we, did, we added a wilderness study to it. So we looked at the features of that area and determined whether or not it should be recommended for designation. We started with scoping with the public, our organizations, Native Hawaiian organizations, other organizations that we work with, partners. Um, so we did a lot of scoping meetings and then uh, we developed some draft alternatives. And then based on that, we went out to the public, we discussed the draft alternatives, we introduced the wilderness study component of the plan at that point because we determined that we had eligible um, wilderness in Kahuku. And then um, based on the draft alternative comments that we received from everybody and from um, looking at things from within the park as well, then we went back and we developed the alternatives that are in here now. So we um, have three alternatives, a no action, the preferred alternative, and a third um, alternative. The no action alternative is basically no changes. We would just continue our management as we're doing it right now, um, which means we would not have a management plan for Kahuku. It would remain as we would remain basically under our 1975 master plan. Um, the preferred alternative is obviously the one we prefer um, based on all of the information and comments that we've received and considering all the um, features of the alternatives and um, it, it, in, it incorporates both um, enhancing the visitor experience and protecting the natural and cultural resources of the park and encouraging more um, like stewardship uh, type programs, getting visitors out and doing things in the park to help us manage our resources or learning about how we manage our resources, not just coming out for a day hike or a, a guided tour or whatever. But um, of course, those are also important aspects of our visitation, but giving visitors that want it a, a different type of experience also. So, um, and the big important thing is that it in includes what we're gonna, what we think we should be doing for visitor experience and management of resources at Kahuku, which includes some small campgrounds, picnic areas, making sure we have a good trail network that takes people to really neat features that are found at Kahuku um, and give them a good experience at Kahuku. So, um, so that's the preferred alternative. The third alternative um, is a little bit more restrictive in some aspects. It, um, it, it doesn't have the same, some of the same visitor use experiences that the preferred alternative does, particularly at Kahuku, but in some other aspects also. So, so we think that the preferred alternative offers the best mix. Well, in our society, or in our world today, I should say, you can't really just lock something up and leave it alone because we have a lot of things that go on that we have learned that it requires management. Like um, you have new invasive plants that come in and if you just lock it up and leave it alone, you're gonna have those plants take over and then you'll lose native plants and native birds and other things, um, as insects that co coexist with those plants. And um, so it's really important not to just ignore it, but to, to make sure that you're keeping track of what's, how it's doing and managing it properly. So another aspect that the Park Service requires when we're doing a general management plan, we have to look at surrounding lands that may be worthy of protection. 
So um, the park looked at, um, at areas that are contiguous to the park because the, in our enabling legislation it says that we can only acquire what's contiguous and to determine if anything is, um, has unique resources that would be best protected. In the planning process, we looked at some, and in the 1975 master plan, um, we already had talked about two parcels, um, Ola'a unit. We already own this land. It um, was given to us by the territory in 1952. We manage Ola'a tract um, for protection of its unique old rainforest features. It's a really neat area. Um, but it's not part of our official acreage or our official boundary because it's not contiguous with the park and it has to be as part of our enabling legislation. So we, that is of course one of our top priorities. Um, and the Great Crack Parcel, um, or parcels, it's several within there. Um, this was also in the 1975 master plan and so it remains in this one. It still has some unique resources that would be worthy of protection. Um, we've added um, another consideration for Alawai parcel. Um, it has really unique archeological resources and um, Pohui Bay parcel. And, and these lands that other than Ola'a, the Park Service doesn't have to acquire these lands. These are lands that we think have unique features that are worthy of protection. But um, uh, in our boundary acquisition analysis, we clearly say that, you know, of course the Park Service could protect them, but it could also be done through partnership. If somebody else acquires it and wants to protect it, um, we're happy to work in partnership with them. Well, we look forward to having everybody read the plan or at least read the executive summary, which gives the overview of the plan. And, and then based on that, then you can um, go to the sections of the plan and, and provide your feedback because we, we, t we really value public comment and we'll take that information to help us determine is the preferred alternative, does it stay as it is or do we need to do some revisions for a final alternative? or final general management plan. Um, so it really helps. And we also have a public meeting coming up in June, on June 10th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Kilauea Visitor Center. So um, at that time, we'll also have a formal wilderness hearing. So anybody that wants to provide testimony on our wilderness study is welcome to come and provide that testimony at that time. It'll be at the same time as the meeting, just in a separate room. So um, we encourage people to give us your feedback. <laughs>